Travel TV. I'm your host, Debbie Gerber. We are in Swaziland. I wanted to show you some of the things as we crossed the border into Swaziland. It had this wonderful sign that says, Was Udlala. At least I hope that's how they say it. That's how I pronounce it. Was Udlala, which means come and play. What a fantastic opening to a country full of friendly, wonderful people and a country who is one of their main sports is soccer. Love it. They did it as a campaign. It was, and it's still there, and I just love the idea of come and play in our country. Wonderful. And it was a wonderful country. As we went through the countryside, it was quite a contrast. It was a contrast between dirt, um, kind of like a plain dirt ground where you didn't see a lot of green on the ground. Uh, then you'd have the pastures in the area. Then you would see these wonderful, beautiful flowers. So it was quite a contrast, this country. The contrast was there from the people who lived in the very, very poor circumstances. They lived in these little houses. Some of them were kind of like maybe adobe uh, houses with uh, tin or tile roof. Some of them were merely just put up with whatever they could find, things like cardboard or wood. They did seem to have more wood than some of the other places that they incorporated into building their houses. They had these little street areas where they had stands where they would sell fruit and they would sell food and they would sell um, items that you might need on an everyday basis. As we drove through, you know, we were on a bus tour. And so you're driving on a bus. These buses have huge big windows that you can see out of, and they're fairly comfortable to ride in. As we rode on the bus to see the things around the country, you'd have these little houses that were out in the country. And there was one that was really kind of cool. It reminded me of something more that you would see maybe in the Netherlands, this little round one with a thatch roof on it. It was just awesome. So there was a, a lot of things that you would see that were different, even within their own country. But as we drove through some of the cities, I was surprised to see that some of these cities were built right up in the mountain. They were just like just part of the rolling hills and part of the mountain sides. So they were built up in there, and you would have everything from individual houses that were, like I said, in very poor circumstances there, two houses that were fairly nice, and then you would have apartment complexes, and then you would have really nice houses. So there, it was quite a contrast of a country. As we went through, one of the things that I noticed, because I grew up on a farm, love animals, I loved being on a farm, although... I swore I would never marry a farmer, sorry you guys out there, because I hated having to do the, I hated milking cows. I guess I should have said dairy farmer because I hated having to be home to milk cows because it was like you'd have to be home at the time the cows had to be milked. So if you were milking twice a day, that meant that you couldn't go anywhere for very long. You could run to town or go to church, but that was about it. At least that was my childhood. I had said I will not do that, but I still miss some of the farm aspects, the animals and things like that. So it was kind of fun to know that about 70% of the workforce in Swaziland is, are employed in the, in the agricultural section. And as we drove around, we got to see some of the things that, or some of the crops that they grow there, sugar cane and pineapples and mace, tobacco, rice. There is quite a, a list of one of the main ones that they grow there, which then, you know, translate in, into some of the things that they export. They export soft drink concentrates and sugar, you know, so those are some of the things that they export because of some of the crops that they grow there. Now, some of their main industries are mining and forestry and agriculture. So that kind of gives you a little bit of overview of what the country has as far as, you know, what's there. They also have diamonds and precious stones. They have some of those things there and silver and gold. So, you know, 
they do have a lot of a variety of natural resources as well. Uh, some of the things they mine are cold and coal and asbestos. Those are some of the bigger mining uh, things that they mine. It was it's an interesting thing to find out about a country before you travel, so that when you get there, you can say, "Oh yeah, that's sugarcane, and you know they grow that, and that's one of their main." crops here, that kind of thing. Do some research before you go. Hopefully you're using this show as part of that research for your travels so that you get there and you might even know more, be able to tell people with you more than what the guide's telling you at the time, or at least be able to have some intelligent questions to ask them to tell you about the country. Swaziland has about one, well, it's over one million people. And it's a small country. It's like the second smallest country in Africa. And it trades mostly with South Africa and uh, Mozambique. Even though some of these uh, homes were in very poor circumstances and these people live differently than we do, it is interesting to see how friendly and how happy they are. I even thought of, you know, sometimes we camp out, and it would be kind of similar to that. They do cook not with electricity in all of these homes, in some, but not all. And so we would see kind of some of the smokiness in the area where they were doing that. As this country or in other countries do continue to develop and their infrastructure gets better and they're more able to provide services to the people, uh, then they will have a better ability and education to, you know, take care of the trash that's around and what to do with it and a place to take it. Uh, they will have more uh, electrical, um, better uh, electricity brought into them in a safer way. Anything that we can do even is a great help. I mean, it's something that we should feel a responsibility to, too, to be able to help Tourism is one way that helps. They do depend on tourism dollars to come into the country. And Swaziland, like I said, is a fabulous place to go. As we drove around and we were looking at some of the areas, I found a few things that I thought were just really cool. Anywhere in the world you go, you will find people who are entrepreneurs. They are making their own way. No matter what, they're going to make it. And they find ways of doing things that create an income like setting up a stand where they can sell what they have made. But this one I thought was really funny. Someone had been making dog houses and selling dog houses, and they were really cute and really clever. I remember growing up, like I said, on a farm, and it was during a time when we did not have a dryer. We had a washing machine, but not a dryer. And my mother, well... Let's say I got to hang the clothes up on the line, too. So we would hang the clothes up on the line to dry outside. So was, there was even memories of that that went through my head as we drove through this area. And you could see that they hung their clothes up on the line. And I do remember that they, when you would take them off the line, they were kind of crisp and smelled really good from being outside. So I thought, you know, there's not, that's not too bad to be, have to be hanging your clothes outside. Not that I'd really want to do it myself now, but I do remember that as being a good memory. We watched people as they would walk along and do their work, and I loved this lady, and, and the ladies would carry their babies, and they had these slings that they would do. And I thought, you know what? We do that now. We have those slings, and they sell them for a lot of money so that you can swaddle your baby, carry it around with you, and carry it you know, backpack front or back. Here she was walking on her way. Also, they, a lot of the transportation isn't easy there, and so you'll see them gathering items up, either bundles of crops or sticks or whatever. And I love this picture of this fellow as he was carrying his load along the road. I love the plants. Sometimes you can just enjoy just from very simple things. And I love the plants. There were the papaya plants and there were these flowers. And I would go along and take pictures because I love taking pictures of things. And the flowers against the wood or the greenery against the wood. 
flowers in the cactus. I think it's the contrast and just the beauty of like a single flower or a flower where there's chaos or where there's where the landscape is dreary. I really like things like that. I like a single tree sitting out by itself. That just captures my eye, especially if it's just sitting at a contrast with something that is not quite as beautiful on its own without this flower or this tree or this plant. I love Swaziland. I would definitely include it if you're going to South Africa uh, or make sure that it's in part of your package. Great place to be. Love the people. So friendly. So nice. It, it was just a great place to go. Join us again at Boomer and Senior Travel. TV. We would love to have you as part of our audience. I would really like to hear your comments. I want to hear what you like about the show, what you'd like us uh, to add to the show, if you have anything that you uh, would like done differently. I'm really open to my audience giving me suggestions because I want you to enjoy this. I want you to be able to go on a virtual vacation if you can't travel and be able to see this. If you are homeschooling, I want you to be able to use this as part of your curriculum to teach about these places. And if you are traveling to these destinations, I want you to be able to see beforehand what to see so that you don't miss things and go home and say, darn, I wished I'd seen that. But you will know all of the things there are to see there, and you can go and, and be able to be an informed traveler. And an informed traveler gets a richer experience from their travels. Come to our website, www.boomerandseniortravel.tv, and visit us today.